booktube, I'm Vanessa and today I really wanted to talk to you guys about the book Bloodwater Paint by Joy McCallow. Oh, little intro here. This book came out last year and it tells the story of Artemisia Gentileschi who was a female Baroque painter in the 1600s. The story goes over not only her career as an artist and a female artist in the 1600s at that, but it also covers the topic of her rape and her decision to press charges against her rapist and the subsequent trial that ensued. However, this book also follows the story of two other women. It tells the stories of Susanna and the Elders and Judith and Holofernes, which are biblical stories and they're also the stories that two of Artemisia's most famous paintings are based on. So as a whole, this book covers the topic of rape and sexual harassment, things like the male gaze, as well as the struggle of being a woman in the world trying to make a career or a name for yourself that is independent from the men in your life. This book is told in verse and from kind of a diary perspective of Artemisia, and that format really makes it feel personal and emotional, but it also keeps that distance from the details of things so that it's not upsetting to read. And the author in an interview actually said that that's why she chose this format, is because she wanted all of the feelings to come through, but she didn't want people to be triggered or disturbed by reading it. And another thing that this book does is it really draws this undeniable connection between the events of the past and the events of today. And it really forces us to confront the fact that we haven't gotten that much better. I thought that this was an amazing book. It was honestly one of the best books that I read last year. It made me cry in an airport. Like that's how powerful this book was. But I've seen a lot of lukewarm reviews on it and I think one of the main complaints that I've been hearing about it is that it didn't do a great job of laying out the background context of like who is Artemisia and why is she important and who is Susanna and Judith and why are we reading about these other women in this book too? And I can see that because it is told in verse. It's not very detailed and I think it did miss a lot of the background context for things, but it made me so sad to hear so many people say that they weren't appreciating Artemisia's story as much as I do because let me tell you guys, Artemisia is one of my favorite historical figures. I love her and her story is so powerful to me. Um, actually in my art history class I did my entire final project on Artemisia and her artwork. So long story short I am fairly familiar with these topics and so I thought that since I had seen people expressing a desire for more information and more context I was like I can do that. I know that information. So today I am here to provide some context about who Artemisia is, what is her story, why are Susanna and Judith important as stories and as paintings, and the ways in which Artemisia's story, even though it's 400 years old, is still something that women are experiencing today. And also a quick side note here, I know that this book is about some sensitive topics, like I said, and I want to talk about those in a respectful way and not go into like details or disturbing things or anything like that, but that is the subject matter that we're working with for this video, so if that's something that will be upsetting to you to hear about, I just want to let you know up front that that is kind of a big theme in Artemisia's history that we're going to be talking about today. So first of all, I'm going to put this book down because my arm is hurting, but I want to talk about who Artemisia was and what her story is. Like I said, Artemisia was a Baroque painter in the 1600s in Italy, and she's one of the first famous and like most prominent female painters that came out of her time. Even though during her life it was really a struggle for her to be recognized for her work because this was a time when women weren't painters. They weren't taken seriously and they certainly didn't get to have their own careers and jobs very often. So Artemisia started out as an assistant to her father who was also a painter and by helping him with painting she learned how to paint herself and she became really good at it. And a lot of sources kind of imply that her father tried to get her away from painting, like he tried to send her to a nunnery or like marry her off and send her away, but eventually he had to admit that like his daughter had talent, so he eventually allowed her to continue being involved in the painting world. And when Artemisia was 16 or 17, he actually hired a painting tutor for her so that she could continue learning and developing her talent. Unfortunately, this tutor, a man named Agostino Tassi, was kind of a skeezball, and when Artemisia was 17, he raped her. After that, he kind of blackmailed her into continuing sexual activity with him by saying that if she began to carry on a sexual relationship with him that he would marry her. And I know that sounds totally gross, but like you have to remember that at this time for a woman marriage was everything. Like that was the way to make a life for yourself. And unfortunately when it came to marriage, virginity was everything too. 
if you weren't a virgin anymore, it was like good luck getting married and finding a good husband, which again is totally gross, but like that's how society was set up for women back then. So actually a lot of women who were raped back then ended up marrying their attackers because what else could you do? So after Tossi raped her, Artemisia agreed to enter a sexual relationship with him in exchange for him marrying her. And then despite this agreement that they had made, he didn't marry her. And Artemisia had everything to lose by bringing charges against Tossi because that meant announcing to the world that this had happened. And bringing that to public knowledge would ruin her reputation more than it would ever do anything to him. And Artemisia knew that, but she looked that unjust system in the face and she said, it doesn't matter, I want to pursue justice anyway. So she convinced her father to press charges for her and I believe in the court system they were property damage charges, like that's what it went in as. Her father sued Tossie for damaging his property basically. And they went to court and basically the trial was torture. Like literally they actually tortured her physically. They used thumb screws on her hands in court to make sure she wasn't lying. She was the one suing him for rape and yet somehow she was the one being tortured for information in court. And they tortured her hands because they knew that she was an artist. They knew that she needed her hands to make a career for herself. So that alone kind of tells you the position that Artemisia was in by taking this to court. They tried everything to prove that Artemisia was lying. They slut shamed her. Tossi had these like erotic letters that she had supposedly written to all these other men, even though Artemisia was like illiterate and couldn't read or write, but okay to try and prove that she was oh so slutty, therefore she couldn't have been raped. They victim blamed her. They said, oh, well, she had flirted with him and led him on, and after all, she went into a room alone with him. They accused her of having slept with all these other men before she even met Tossie. They even accused her of being a legit prostitute. By accusing Tossie of raping her, Artemisia ended up being the one who put herself on trial in front of all these people. Her character was assassinated, her reputation was ruined, it was a nightmare. And on top of this all, it's so frustrating because Tossie already had previous rape convictions. He had already been convicted of raping his former sister-in-law and his ex-wife. And a lot of people actually believed that he had hired assassins to kill his ex-wife because she disappeared mysteriously. Tossie was like, 100% a shady guy for sure, and yet somehow Artemisia was the one being treated like a suspicious criminal during this trial. At the end of it, they did convict him, but I think his jail time was only like eight months in jail and then a judge pardoned him or something, whereas Artemisia had to bear those consequences and that humiliation for the rest of her life. But she ended up marrying a family friend and moving away to Florence and her hands healed and she was able to work on her art career far away from everything and she actually became a very successful and a very famous painter. And that's what I want to talk about next is her paintings. Artemisia's paintings are famous for the way she portrays women so honestly and so differently from the way male painters did and still do. The examples that are used in Bloodwater Paint are Susanna and the Elders and Judith and Holofernes. Again, these are paintings that Artemisia did, but they're also based on stories. And Bloodwater Paint tells Judith's story and Susanna's story alongside Artemisia's story. So the first painting that I want to talk about is Susanna and the Elders. This is a story from the book of Daniel, which is about a woman who is taking a bath in her garden in her backyard. And these two town elders are spying on her while she's in the bath and they approach her and they basically tell her to sleep with them and when Susanna says no like I'm loyal to my husband leave me alone they say well we're the elders in this town and we kind of have all the power here so if you don't commit adultery with us we're going to tell everyone that we saw you committing adultery with someone else and then you're gonna be executed basically and Susanna decides that she would rather be stoned to death and she screams and tons of people come running and they see her standing there naked with the elders there and they make their accusation against her and the next day they have a trial and the town convicts her of adultery and they're about to stone her to death when, you know, suddenly Daniel shows up and saves the day and tells everyone that this isn't the godly biblical thing to do to a woman, yada yada. Now, the scene where Susanna is bathing and the elders are spying on her is a really popular scene for painters to portray. And there are a lot of versions of this scene painted by male artists. And today I wanted to show you a few of them and let you see how this story had commonly been portrayed by men. So this is a painting by Tintoretto and basically Susanna doesn't even notice 
thinks the elders are spying on her because she's too busy looking at herself in the mirror. Like, she's so vain. She doesn't even know what's going on. And then there's another one by Alori, and this one is, she's flirting with them. She's legitimately, like, pulling the elders in. Like, she's having fun. Compare these male takes on this story with Artemisia's painting. She's pissed. This Susanna is not happy with these elders. She's like, get away from me. I don't like this. And I think that that says a lot about Artemisia's experiences as a woman. This painting was painted before her rape, but she had been through so many other things in her life. You know, she had been harassed by another guy before. Her father actually made her pose nude for his art classes. He made her model naked in front of strangers as a young girl. So the ways in which Artemisia portrayed Susanna and connected with Susanna's stories are very clear, and I can only imagine how much more so after her trial, where she was being judged and metaphorically stoned to death when she she wasn't even the one who did anything wrong. The other story that's included in Bloodwater Paint is that of Judith and Holofernes, which is probably Artemisia's most famous painting. This one came after her rape, and I mean, I think we can clearly see the significance of this painting, even without knowing the story of Judith. But I remember when I read Judith's story for the first time when I was doing research for my paper on Artemisia, I was like, oh my god. So the story of Judith and Holofernes is in some versions of the Bible, and basically Judith is a widow living in the city of Bethulia, which is under attack. They're under siege by the Assyrians. And Judith decides she's gonna save the city, so her and her handmaiden walk into the enemy's camp. Judith offers herself to the general, she takes him back to his tent, she seduces him, and afterwards, while he's dead asleep, she cuts his friggin' head off. She takes the head back to her city, she's like, I saved the city, she saved all of Israel. Like, what a legend. Judith did that. Like I said, Artemisia painted this after her rape, and I think the emotional connection is clear here in the way that she portrayed the violence of Judith. In other versions of this painting, Judith is very dainty, look at her little hand, Look at how the blood is delicately dribbling away from her. Look at her little face. Compared to Artemisia's Judith, look at that girl go. Blood spurting, arms flexing. She's putting her back into that. And another very significant thing about Artemisia's version of this painting is that her handmaiden is helping her. She is helping to hold him down. She's got one hand on the sword. This handmaiden is in it with Judith. And Artemisia has another painting that's just Judith and her handmaid carrying the head back together. And this actually hit me really hard when I was researching because the thing is, is that Artemisia's mother died when she was 12. And the only sort of female companion or protector figure that she had in her life was her father's tenant, a woman named Tuzia, who was often left in charge of Artemisia. And on the day that Artemisia was raped, Tuzia was supposed to be with her. She was supposed to be watching out for her. But she let Tossi into the house when Artemisia's father was at home, and she let Tossi take Artemisia into a room alone. And when Tossi began attacking Artemisia, she cried out for Tuzia's help and Tutsia didn't come. So this painting telling the story of Judith with a handmaid who was there for her and who did help her when she needed it, I can only imagine what Artemisia must have been feeling to paint this that way. And the way Judith's story is portrayed in Bloodwater Paint alongside Susanna and alongside Artemisia, what all of these women went through and have in common, and what Artemisia must have admired about each of them, it is so powerful and I think it was an incredible choice by the author to include those stories as well. Because they're not just the stories behind Artemisia's most famous paintings, they're part of Artemisia's story as well. So for anybody who was kind of wondering why those stories were in there or feeling like they weren't totally invested in those stories, that's why they're so significant, why the author chose to include them in the book. And finally, the last thing that I want to talk about today is kind of how this book, which is written about a woman who lived over 400 years ago, is really a story about what so many women are living through today. What the world put Artemisia through is something that women are still being put through every day, and Joy McCullough was very aware of that when she wrote Bloodwater Paint. First of all, sexual harassment has always been a thing. Women have been putting up with harassment and abuse for always. It's clearly nothing new, but more than that, Artemisia's trial reads so similarly to the way women 
women are treated when they come forward about assault today. You think about the way that she was put under torture to verify she was telling the truth. Meanwhile, the man, who is actually the one on trial for rape, never had to prove the worth of his testimony. He was allowed to give his side of the story in complete comfort and dignity. And today we still see women not being believed and being treated like liars and scammers who are just trying to ruin some poor innocent man's life. Or the way they tried to say that it couldn't have been rape because look how slutty she is. Look how she flirted with him. Look how she was alone in the room with him. How many women today are still told that they were asking for it or have to answer questions about what were you wearing or why were you at that party or were you drinking? As if what a man did to them was their own fault. And look at the way her convicted rapist who was found guilty in court only served eight months of jail time before being pardoned by the Pope. The Pope pardoned him because he liked his artwork. You think about Brock Turner only spending six months in jail because the judge didn't want to ruin his swimming career. Or the football team not being punished because they were just boys. Or Brett Kavanaugh going on trial, the woman accusing him receiving death threats and being called a liar. While meanwhile, he gets off scot-free and is allowed to become a judge on the Supreme Court. Artemisia tried to stand up against this system 400 years ago and women today are still fighting the same battle that she fought. In a way, it is devastating to realize that. But in another way, I also find Artemisia's story so empowering because it lets us know that we're not alone. And Artemisia wasn't alone. She had the stories of Susanna and Judith to lean on for strength and inspiration. And as long as we continue to tell the stories of other brave women who are fighting this battle with us, we have their stories to lean on for courage as well. And the most important thing about Artemisia's story isn't the fact that she was assaulted. It's that she pushed through it. She lived her life. She followed her dreams and she became a damn famous painter in spite of everything that had happened to her. And that's why I am so glad that someone is telling her story to a new audience. Bloodwater paint wasn't perfect and I definitely get how its full effect fell flat for a lot of people, but I still think that it is an incredible story and one that I hope more people will read and become interested in. So that's why I wanted to make this video today and I hope that it filled in the blanks for some people or maybe got some people interested in reading the book or learning about Artemisia. In fact, I'm going to leave resources linked down below to information about Artemisia for anyone who is interested or wants to learn more about her. And other than that, I think I've pretty much done all that I could do today. So again, I hope that you liked this video and I would love to talk to you in the comments if you want to continue with this conversation or if you feel more comfortable, if you have anything you want to talk about, you are more than welcome to DM me on Twitter or Instagram in private. I know that this is kind of a personal issue for a lot of people, myself included, so I want anyone who's interested to know that if you want to continue this conversation, my messages are open and I'm here. Again, I hope that you like this video and I really hope that I get to talk to you soon. Bye!